Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Skip Allen Paints. This will be the second tip video, <laughs> or video that gives you a tip <laughs> using Painter. Um, okay, so what we're going to talk about this time are two functions under Window. So if I come up to Window and I open that up, you'll see Hide Application UI and Hide Panels. And those are the two things that we're going to talk about. Okay, so what we're looking at here is my arranged palette. Say, ooh, <laughs> it's 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Why am I yawning? <laughs> okay, here is uh, the arrangement that we saved earlier. And uh, I'm going to do a couple of other little things to it so we can um, see some different stuff. I'm going to, uh, let's see, what am I going to grab? I'm going to grab the DAB profile and I'll bring it out here. And I think I will grab the, well brush control panel, bring it out, and I'll bring out the mixer panel. Okay, that's that's probably, no, let's see, I want to do one other thing. Let's bring out layers, and we'll stick it over here in the way. Um, okay, so I brought those out, and, and you'll understand why I brought them out uh, in a few minutes. Okay, so let's go back and look at what happens here. We click on Window, and if I click Hide Panels, watch what happens. Hide Panels, and all of the panels disappear. But you still have your toolbar, your media toolbar, your brush selector, your brush property bar, and your recent brushes are still showing. Okay? Now, this is a toggle. And there's a shortcut key for it, shift tab. So since it's a toggle, we can click on it again, and that will bring back all of our panels. Okay. So then we go to hide application UI. What does it do? Well, we click on it, <clears throat> and now everything is hidden, including your brush selector, the property bar, your tool uh, bar, and all of that. So what you got is a very, very clean surface. What I use this for, uh, I, I love to paint in this uh, situation here where there's nothing else on the screen to show uh, what's going on. But what's also nice is you can bring up one image and bring up another image and put them side by side and look at them easily without all the rest of the stuff uh, going on. Okay. But I want to show you a couple of other tricks. Okay, so let's go back to uh, Show Application. And uh, let me see here. Yeah, Hide Panels is still there. Okay, so let's go in and we'll Hide Panels. That hides all the panels. But let's say I really want a single panel back. Let's say I, I would like to be able to use the Layers panel. So if I go under Windows and click on Layers, I can open that panel. I'm still in Hide Panel mode. See, if I go to Window, you'll see it says Show Panels. So my panels uh, are virtually still hidden, except for the one that I brought back. Now, <clears throat> that may be the only thing I need. You might say, uh, well, you need your brush selector. We got it. You, you know, you need your toolbar. We got it. And I've got whatever I need over here. You, you might also say, why don't you just make an arrangement that's this way? And, of course, I could. But doing what I just did here, these are temporary arrangements. They're not ones that I want to save all the time. If it was something I wanted to save all the time, I would save it. But remember, I said in the earlier uh, video about arranged palettes that uh, you don't want to have too many of the things because they can eat up a lot of your memory. So you have to sort of pick and choose. All right, now let's go back to uh, 
um, show panels. Okay, so my panels are showing again, all covered up over on this side. Now I'm going to go up to Window, Hide Application UI, and everything gets lost. But again, I can click on Window, and I can come down here and open up a panel that I might want to use. Now the reason before I went into all this, I pulled panels out by themselves, that's because if I select a panel that is connected with other panels, put into a, a palette with other panels, um, for instance, if I were to click on liquid ink, what I'm going to get is the liquid ink panel, that's for sure, right there. But I'm also going to get all the other panels that were connected to it. So if you want the single panel, be sure to pull it away from this palette and make the panel uh, be separate by itself. Okay, now what about the, um, the brush selector, the brush panel, the toolbar, all that stuff? Well, you can bring most of that over. Um, you, you, you can certainly bring the toolbar over. The brush selector and the property bar, you would need to pull them off of their docking. As long as these panels are not docked, then you can bring them back. Now, you can bring them back docked as well, but you bring back the whole dock. So it's, uh, you know, not as advantageous. So why wouldn't I want the brush selector? Well, if I'm working in a particular category, and I've been working with these thick paints, trying to figure out ways to paint with them, um, if you're working from a particular category, if you right click on your image area, all of the brushes in that category will pop up. We're currently using SA Impasto 6M. All right, so I could change that to SA Impasto 11M by clicking on that. And that's the brush now that I'm using. So right click gives you everything you need. All right, so what about I want the color wheel? Well, I can have uh, the color wheel, the temporal color wheel, on my uh, connected to my Wacom, and I can pull it up at any time. My second button under it uh, is main additional, so it will change the main or additional color. See that change right there? And if I want to resize my brush, I can click on my Alt Control, hold the brush next to the canvas, and change the radius of it. If I click that button again, it changes to opacity. If I click it again, it changes to squeeze, and again, changes to angle. That's the angle. Back again, and we're back to the brush size. Okay, so see all of that changed my brush the way I wanted. So what I'm pointing out is that you can, through uh, some shortcuts through your Wacom tablet and bringing out just the panels that you need, you can create temporary workspaces using um, that are that don't use much real estate. For instance, I wouldn't have brought that one up. So this doesn't use much real estate, and I could have a large size painting to work on. Now this one's square, so it would be hard to <laughs> work with it. But if it was, you know, longer than it is uh, tall, uh, wider than it is tall, then it would fit into this longer uh, uh, screen that I have, or this big screen. Okay, that's all it is. That was just trying to give you some ideas of how to work with uh, those two functions that are called um, hide application UI or user interface and hide panels. All right. Hope that made some good sense to you. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.